Welcome to the second episode of the Seeking Wisdom and Stories podcast. In this episode, we'll explore the theme of redemption and how it shapes powerful stories. I think redemption is one of the most popular thematic ideas in storytelling. Perhaps it's because we want to experience something meaningful in our own lives. Redemption takes what was lost and brings it back through restoration, perhaps in a stronger, more vibrant form. To be redeemed is to have a second chance. And many of us who have experienced the ups and downs in life know the weight of regret and missed opportunities. If we only had one more opportunity to try again, life could be different. When we think of a typical hero's journey, there usually is some point in the story where the protagonist has a fall from grace or experiences a great loss or setback due to a major character flaw. Then, The rest of the story involves the protagonist making a comeback by addressing the consequences of that fall or loss, ideally leading to a satisfying climax at the story's end. I wonder if the hope for redemption starts with the thought, if only I did this, or if only this was possible. This hints at the idea that maybe a character thinks he is stuck in his present circumstances after making a mistake or falling from grace. I think we tie ideas of renewal and new beginnings into the theme of redemption, and that connects to a human desire for a better tomorrow. It's natural to want to keep moving forward and progressing towards something beyond our current situation, because we know our time in this world is finite and limited. When we have an end in sight, we want to make our choices meaningful. So if stories of redemption are about characters who are striving, pushing, and pursuing a change in their present situation from a morally negative to a morally positive definition, A relevant question is how is redemption accomplished? And in asking this question, we're trying to figure out how a story can be constructed to make that journey believable and emotionally worthwhile. The opposite side of this equation is where characters do not achieve redemption, but they encounter tragedy and fall more into their destructive ways. This could be a story about a character who destroys other people around him that encounters an opportunity to reverse that destructive cycle but then chooses to keep moving in that nihilistic direction. In this kind of story, the protagonist does not have a reversal at a heart and soul level. The protagonist stays ingrained in a way of thinking and behaving that can lead to a physical and or spiritual death. So a story about redemption often has a protagonist who changes at a fundamental level. This might suggest that one of the highest stakes in the story is the protagonist's soul. To have a change of heart means that the protagonist is thinking and acting differently in a significant way since the story's beginning, and this change often impacts other characters or the environment. In Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, we see a classic story of redemption in the journey of the miserly, Ebenezer Scrooge. At first, Scrooge is selfish, manipulative, and heartless toward his fellow citizens, including his lowly clerk, Bob Cratchit. But after a series of supernatural encounters with the ghosts of Christmas past, present, and future, Scrooge realizes the errors of his ways, and that will only lead to his own sad demise. Scrooge is given a second chance. He's redeemed when he wakes up the next morning and chooses to change his ways, and becomes more giving and benevolent to the people around him. For Scrooge, a changed heart leads to changed behavior and a new lease on life. The 90s romantic comedy Jerry Maguire also tells the story of redemption in an interesting way by starting the story with what seems to be a moment of revelation for highly successful sports agent Jerry, played by Tom Cruise. In the film's opening montage, Jerry has a hit to his conscience when he tries to appease the young son of an injured football player, but the encounter does not go as planned. Jerry tries to tell the boy that his dad will pull through and will be on the field again, but the boy is upset by Jerry's lack of empathy. Jerry realizes that his whole professional life has been coasting on an impersonal approach, and he resolves to change things by writing a manifesto that counters the values of his sports agency. Believing he has set a revolution in motion, he instead gets fired from his agency and has to start over with two clients. The film tracks how Jerry comes to recognize that he doesn't know how to be truly vulnerable, especially in a romantic relationship with Dorothy Boyd, played by Renee Zellweger. He finally finds redemption when he breaks through the wall surrounding his heart and starts being vulnerable to his wife because he's finally letting go of his need to control. In the original Star Wars trilogy, one of the redemptive subplots involves the antagonist, Darth Vader. In The Return of the Jedi, Darth Vader is confronted with the reality 
that his long lost son, Luke Skywalker, is going to be killed by the Emperor. But Darth Vader steps in, takes down the Emperor, and throws him off a bridge to his death in order to save Luke. In taking this action, we see Darth Vader redeeming himself from fully giving into the dark side. In the Telltale game series The Walking Dead Season 1, convicted murderer Lee forges a new surrogate father-daughter relationship with young Clementine. They're both broken souls who find each other in the midst of a zombie apocalypse. At the beginning of the game, we as the player follow Lee as he is being driven to prison by a police officer in a squad car. His life was heading into a very specific direction until they're interrupted by the presence of wayward zombies. In the chaotic aftermath, while trying to figure out how to live with a band of survivors, Lee constantly has to juggle figuring out how to survive against the burdens of revealing his murderous past. When Lee takes Clementine under his wing and teaches her how to survive in this zombie world, he's slowly being redeemed for his past sins by ensuring another person can go on living. In the first Shrek movie, the grumpy ogre Shrek goes on a redemptive journey by gradually opening himself up to relationships with others, including his friend Donkey, and a romance with Princess Fiona. At the beginning of the movie, he's isolated and is feared by others because of his outward gruffness. He undergoes a change of heart through meaningful relationships, and so his self-worth and impact on others are redeemed. Bill Murray, in Groundhog Day, goes on a similar journey as a weatherman who's forced to relive one day again and again until he learns the error of his self-absorbed ways. For the Avengers in Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame, the heroes fail to stop the villain Thanos from annihilating half of the universe when he uses the Infinity Gauntlet. So the second film, Endgame, is essentially an ensemble effort for the original Avengers to correct their failures for the sake of the universe's survival. Another Marvel film, Black Panther, has protagonist T'Challa removed from the throne and almost killed by villain Killmonger because of the mistakes of T'Challa's father and T'Challa's own struggle with how to stand up to the threat. All of this leads to Killmonger's rise. Only when T'Challa confronts his father in the soul realm and decides to face off against Killmonger does he start to go on his redemptive journey, becoming a king who will take the greater responsibility for not only his own actions, but for those before him. It is the unique burden of a king to confront this challenge. Earlier, we touched on how there are stories that show the opposite of redemption, A good example of this is the manga and anime series Death Note. In the series, a young, ambitious law student, Light Yagami, receives a supernatural notebook called a Death Note from a demon. Light is given the power to kill anyone in the world and also to determine the circumstances of the death by writing down the details in the book. He becomes judge, jury, and executioner in one fell swoop. Light could use the power to make the world a better place by removing criminals, and he does this from the beginning. But the power to take human life, and to do so outside of the law, leads him down a twisted path, where he's soon pursued by the police and a mysterious genius named L. The series becomes a cat and mouse game, a mental chess showdown between Light and L, and this conflict drives Light further and further away from any chance of redemption. He will not surrender his ways to the law. At many points in the story, we might even empathize with what Light Yagami is experiencing. Maybe that's why stories about redemption are so powerful. We can see the darkness within ourselves and the potential to be corrupted and to corrupt. We know we could or have gone wrong in our own lives, and it's the burden of this wrong that weighs on our souls. One of the greatest philosophical debates is whether or not we as humans have free will. To have free will in a universe where there is a moral distinction between good and evil means that we could choose to do both good and evil at any point in time. Stories that tell the opposite of redemption, i.e. a fall from grace, are so compelling because they can act as a mirror into our own souls. They can be a cautionary tale to make us aware of the broken fractures in our being that lead us to go rogue. In the AMC series Breaking Bad, protagonist Walter White has a very complicated journey that lands in the end somewhere between clear redemption and a fall from grace. He pays for his actions with his own life, but he also has given his accomplice Jesse another chance at life. The series is very successful in challenging our notions of right and wrong in asking whether redemption is possible for its characters. While there may be stories like Breaking Bad that land in moral gray areas, it still seems that stories of redemption have long-lasting value to audiences because of our desire to become free of our burdens. 
we vicariously live through protagonists who fall from grace, but then achieve redemption in the end, largely because we want to experience that freedom ourselves. I think it's meaningful to tell stories about redemption because they're a mirror to our own experiences and possibly offer a hope for future freedom. Thank you for listening to this second episode of the Seeking Wisdom in Stories podcast. I appreciate you taking time to listen in, and I hope to share more with you in the next episode.